Dear learners, today I am going to talk about a very important process which will excite you about the uh, basic process which controls many of the features which occur in the earth. I am going to talk about the soil formation. Soil is a very important resource as few millimeters of soil can take tens of thousands of years to form. Ultimately, life depends on weathering and release of nutrients. Weathering provides the key nutrients for the life through the chemical breakdown of minerals in crustal rocks. Because the rocks hold the nutrients, terrestrial ecosystems as well as life in oceans depends on the nutrients released by weathering process. The productivity for example is highest on the continental shelves and in regions of upwelling. The weathering of rocks results in an important process which is called soil formation. Soil is formed when rocks break down continuously by the different process physical, chemical and biological. It is extremely important for most living organisms. Plants depend on the soil for the mineral nutrition. Also the animals depend on the plant. Essentially the soil is very important for all life process that occurs on the earth. There are two kinds of soil which I would like to tell you. Residual soil is that which remains in the same place after it has formed. The residual soil has a composition exactly similar or almost similar to that of the parent rock it covers. Whereas there is another kind which is called transported soil in which the soil when it is formed it is transported from the place of origin. As a result what happens? It has a composition which is slightly different from the rocks over which this uh, soil is formed. Some soil is removed from parent rock by wind, water, glaciers, waves etc. Now in the soil formation there is a top layer which has humus. Humus is nothing but the bacteria which cause the decay of dead plants and animals. This decaying material is called humus. Normally they are dark colored and important for the growth of the plants. Now soil composition if you see it is the pieces of weathered rock and organic material or humus the two main ingredients of the soil. Organic material that means it is formed from living organisms and rock particles are formed from weathering of the rocks and more than 80 percent of the soil is weathering product that is the rock particles. The rock particles and the humus and the soil organic matter has some pores and in these pores air and water occupy these spaces. The minerals in soil they are mainly clay and quartz they are the most abundant minerals in soil. Clays are secondary minerals of the rock weathering that is why weathering of rocks produces secondary minerals and these are essentially clay. They are normally stable and exist in great quantities. If you see the elements they are very important for life which are present potassium, phosphorus, nitrogen they are important for the plant growth. The pore spaces are occupied by air and water. When they are occupied by air and water it is very important because the plants derive the gases as well as the water requirement from these pore spaces. Different composition of soils can be formed by different parent materials. So this is very important that parent material controls the chemistry of the soil formation. If there is mechanical weathering which is dominant in the formation of soil then the composition of the soil will be essentially as that of the parent rock. But if chemical weathering is a dominant process in the formation of soil then the soil composition will be different from that of the parent rock. Soil texture is an important property which explains the interrelationship of the grains and the size of the individual particles. They can be in different size range from gravel which is coarse then you can have sand finally you can have silt and the finest one would be clay. Soil texture is an important property which controls the many of the factors like porosity and permeability. If you see any well developed soil you will see different layers in soil. These are called horizon just by seeing the colors you can see there are different layers and a cross section of the soil horizon is called soil profile. A soil profile shows the different layers of the soil. You can see this diagram here 
you can see the top layer which is O horizon which is organic material, it is leaf litter, then you have the below that A horizon which is relatively less in organic matter, but it is rich compared to the B horizon. B horizon is called the zone of accumulation because from the A horizon there is leaching taking place and accumulating in the zone B and C horizon is the weathering soil, little organic material or life and R is the unweathered parent material. This is a typical mature soil profile which you see in some places. Mature soil, I use the word, is that which has the well developed layers. It takes thousands of years and proper conditions for soil to develop into these three layers. That is why soil is a very important resource and we cannot manufacture soil in the laboratory. Nature takes thousands of years to develop few mm of soil. Immature soil means it is not mature, the upper layers of the soil are removed and the rocks below the soil are exposed. The weathering then forms the new soil from the exposed rock. This is because there is not enough time for the layers to form or in some places the soil which was formed is transported from its place to another. For example, in case of glacial erosion what happens is the upper layers of soils are removed away and the what you see is an immature soil. Formation of soil, soil forming factors number of them are there, most important are time, climate, type of rock and surface features of the region or I can also call it topography. Time is one of the important factors in soil formation. More the time, more the reaction occurs, more mature will be the soil formed. The second factor is climate. In areas with heavy rainfall and warm temperatures, weathering takes place rapidly and if they are not having these conditions, it can be slow. For example, in desert region, different kind of weathering will take place. If there is heavy rainfall, there is warm temperatures, there is life, then they can speed up the chemical and mechanical weathering of rocks. That is why you have different kind of soil in different parts of the globe because the parent rock may be same, but if the climate conditions are different, the end product can be different. The type of rock is also important. Normally, if it is the same rock, the soil will carry the imprints of the parent rock. But as I explained in the previous slide, if the external conditions are different, weather is different, the climate is different, the rainfall is different, the temperature is different, then the end product can be entirely different from the original parent rock. Surface features of the region are also important, that is the topography. For example, on very steep slopes, rainwater running off the land erodes the soil and exposes the rock to weathering. If it is a stable low lying area, different kind of soil will form. So learners, I believe that today you must have learnt about the significant process in the earth which controls many of the life activities and you must have enjoyed this lecture and become clear about some basic fundamental concepts relating to the soil formation. Thank you very much.